Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to create random assets that you can use for your scene. So things like uh, generators, uh, antennas, and small buildings that you can use to populate your uh, concept art uh, environment. And in the end, we're going to use the sort asset add-on to mark those assets as uh, mark those 3D models as assets so we can use the asset browser to drag and uh, drop them into any scene. Okay, let's start. First off, uh, this is going to be my base or base uh, geometry. And I'm going to set the farthest vertices in the z-axis as its uh, pivot point so shift q express and set origin so the default is already made to do that so just press ok and you can see that you can rotate it here so i'm just going to use this as a template duplicate and then create the design from this So in this uh, initial model, I'm going to create, uh, this is going to be something like a generator, power generator. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do that. But first, the initial design will be uh, using symmetry. And then after we're finished with it, we're going to just duplicate the design um, like two times or three times to create the generator. Okay, just give it some basic topology. And so in, in the previous videos, I've, I said that the randomization is based off the topology of the mesh. So you can use this to your, you can use that to your advantage. So for example, I want details uh, to be more concentrated in this area. So I need, I just add an edge flow there or an edge loop it creates this uh, thin faces. So when I use randomization on it, it's gonna have the appropriate effect in those areas. So let's have it destructive. Okay, uh, merge. Okay, so you can see there the, the faces are more in line with the original topology, whereas it's more relaxed here because of the evenly spaced faces from the front. So you can use this to your advantage and play around with the uh, configuration of the topology. I'm going to go back to merge with the descriptive and just just the subdivision. It's probably too much going to use merge light destructive instead. And just increase the default depth to something like 0 0.01 and negative 0.01 in the minimum. Negative 0.01 in the minimum offset. Here. Now we'll just look for a appropriate design so these objects are going to be rendered at some distance so you can just uh, let's create really big shapes instead of really uh, tiny details because uh, they are going to be rendered at a distance anyway so something like that
something that looks like a generator and also looks striking uh, the design also looks interesting Going back to one. Okay, this looks good. But let's just, I want to make this deeper. So I'm going to play around with depth. Make it stand out more. And also the margin. So when I'm editing this, there's, there's a lot of controls using the Redo panel, you can slide the values using the, uh, drag the mouse left and right to change the values. Do not do this on geometry changing properties like the cuts because it will probably cause a crash. So there's that. And also you can manually input the, you can click and manually input the number 15. Or you can also use, uh, depending on the property, you can press control to affect the control and drag to affect the increments or control shift and drag. So shift is makes the increments much uh, slower. So for example, smooth, when I drag and drag mouse like that, left and right. You can press shift and drag the mouse to make the increments much uh, slower. And with control, the increments, uh, depending on the property, property, it might be 0 0.01, 0 0.001, or 0 0.1. In this case, it's 0.1. And then you can combo that with control shift, and then the increments will go like uh, 0 0.01 in this case. And with just control, it's gonna be 0 0.1. And with control shift, it's gonna be um, 0 0.01 increase. So much slower, much slower with the interval of tens. And we also have uh, control middle mouse button. So you can press control, hover over the any property. So for example, the panel seed. If you press control and then roll the mouse, middle mouse button up down, you can increase or decrease the property. So that's what I'm doing here. And so for example, the margin, instead of using the drag method, I'm using control, middle mouse button, roll, roll up and or down. See? And the increment is uh, using the slowest increment possible, just like pressing shift. There's no control shift in the middle mouse button. There's only control plus the middle mouse, uh, the middle mouse button. Okay, so if, but if you need to be uh, really specific about it, just manually enter the um, value. Okay. So you don't have to actually, <clears throat> wait a minute. Uh, the panel seed has been, I forgot. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, let's go with this. And we can, uh, I'm going to get rid of the, to make the geometry lighter, we can get rid of the, 
quad structure or the extra resolution using limited design. But first, let me just see if I can manually enter, uh, manually um, add some design. So, This is like our generator. Okay. So applying the mirror, apply the mirror, apply mesh, then duplicating this in the edit mode. Okay, and then shift R to repeat the admin. So you can do arrays with duplicates in object mode. You can press shift D to duplicate the object. You can uh, uh, snap the movement to the X, Y, and Z axis using the middle mouse button. And you just select the axis you wanna lock it to. So in this case, the X axis. And then after that, just press Shift R to repeat the action. Then you can do arrays using this uh, with advantage of having the duplicates have um, the same spacing for each uh, duplication. But in this case, I want it to be a single object. So I'm going to use the same method, but in edit mode, selecting the faces that I want to duplicate. Shift D, lock it in the Z axis, and then Shift R, to duplicate. Uh, I mean, to repeat the action and like this. Okay, now the pivot point is in here. So I want it to be on this part here, uh, in the middle. Okay, so we can use the, uh, again, we can use the, set the origin for that, and now it's in the middle. And this is this is cool because once you uh, drag and drop it using the asset browser, when you scale it, it's going to scale towards the floor to the floor, and there won't be an offset from that surface. Okay, so this is our um, what you call it uh, generators. Okay, now let's try and duplicate this again. So we're going to create a sort of antenna, antenna array object. So just keep the design simple. So just, just, uh, and then, okay, so we're going to save this file. Just focus on the big shapes and don't overcomplicate it too much. Uh, we're going to let the randomization do most of the uh, the design when it comes to breaking up the model model's uh, profile or silhouette. Okay. Tena. Now we're going to increase the um, resolution a bit in some areas. Okay, now we're ready to randomize. Random panels, oops. Uh, select the faces and merge heavy destructive. You oh, okay. uh, we don't need to actually. Oh, we shall already set it. Uh, 
So what I meant was we don't need to use the preset. Uh, the last operation already. We, so if we need to use the settings from the last operation, uh, avoid using the preset because it will uh, reset the properties back to the uh, the way the presets have been set. So that was my mistake. So I think we were using merge light destructed and I merge light destructed here and I was I set this to point zero one and uh, uh point zero one point zero one negative point zero one okay and let's just play around with the design okay like we can get rid of that you think uh even offset turn turned off so if you see man there's a bit of the distortion here because of the way the we turned off the even offset and of course the old how small the object is and i think this is also because of the thickness and the margin So the margin here. Yeah. Going to use, we're going to use point zero zero one. Even thickness, uh, thickness is point zero zero three. Okay, don't mind that, and just set this to off. Or we can use even offset, but in the cut method, we can use split. Uh, it's still there. Okay even offset off it is okay let's review the design don't mind the distortion too much because we're only here for the form and at the render distance we're going to use it uh we're not gonna the viewer's not gonna really see any see any of the distortion but of course if you're designing this for production you need to uh, uh, be more careful with the setting and avoid using this kind of topology but with concept concept art it's kind of like the topology you can use uh, you can create characters in the topology sculpt it and don't even you don't even have to retopologize re re it because it's concept art it can remain as uh, the the mesh can remain as the topology, as the um be, as the result of the topology, which is tries. You don't have to retopologize it to use it for your scene. Okay. So wait. Can split it. Let's split it using the sharp, and then use randomization on the split objects and go further with the subdivision i'm just pressing shift r so let's see if this looks better actually I didn't save the data. We were stuck with this. And okay. Let's reduce the uh, let's increase the maximum panel size. Decrease the Subdivision. Actually, we don't need too much detail here. We can be selective about it. Or even here. Okay. 
Control click on partition mesh to join them back together. And we have this topology. But we have avoided most of the uh, geometric distortions from early on. And we can then separate this, draw plot to increase the selection. So that selection, because I can't do this in vertex selection, or maybe I can just you go to face selection and do this. Okay. And then partition mesh selection. So it's separate. So that's the parent. Okay. Now we can use random panels on this. Okay. Uh, probably, probably not on the body, but on this part. Okay, that's good. And then click any of the pieces, control click, and then go back together. Let's see. Um, with some error. We can fix that later. So that's our antenna. And let's look at the base template. Now we can, oops. Be sure, just be sure to apply the scale. So we're going to create like a small building, like an outpost. By the scale, I want to make sure this is straight, and also this one. We're making this straight as well. Or probably not, because the randomization will copy this uh, configuration. But let's just try it without the without having it straight. Okay. Same. Okay, let's split it again using sharp so we can have more fun with more subdivision. Okay, draw click to join them. There we go. Oh, we forgot the to erase this, and we also forgot this part here. But I think we can. Um, 
wait action match selection and now we can they are already in guns but i think we can still undo Well, the uh, the the joining process is really good, but it can fail sometimes. So, but ninety percent of the time it will work. So the main issue was the main issue with splitting the mesh was, uh, what if the user uh used a different subdivision on other parts. So they need to be joined correctly with other pieces that have used uh, different levels of the subdivision. So like this part here, so obviously this failed. This failed here. Uh, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's successful here. Also in this part, yeah. So for some part parts, it can fail because of the way the script works. Um, by filling the holes in the mesh, sometimes it incorrectly uh, joins or fills the holes from different islands. Um, uh, I mean, so those different split objects when joined into one, uh, the mesh is, uh, the holes in the mesh is joined using the um, uh, fill hole command. And sometimes uh, certain combination of faces that have been joined can result in the failure of some parts of the joint process. But most of the time it will work, depending on the... This, uh, and the complexity of the subdivision. Okay. It's our mini kiosk or Uh, outpost. Now let's create um, something like uh, um, a part of a wall that you can array. Okay. If uh, shift U hit origin. Then I'm going to automerdis x y and use. We don't need to use the preset anymore. We have already set the settings, so I'm going to just experiment with the. If this is, if this is good. Oh, so I forgot to. Remove the faces from the foot of the model because we can't really see that. So we let's do something here, and also we can remove this. Let's try and remove that because we're going to use it on. We're going to array the design like a wall. Yeah, this is good. Let's try and fix this. Okay. 
is probably probably the thickness. Let's just use point zero one or point zero two. I'm using control with the mouse button to uh okay, let's do that. Now let's try and use an array modifier on this. Our array modifier. Okay. Go to negative one. There we go. We can use this as a wall. You can also design the Okay, this one will be the straight, and you can also design the corners like an L, like that, and then design that and stuff. Design something like an attachment to this, like a a, a, a post. Okay, so that's our wall, and. We want to design the bracket, the L bracket. Oh. Uh, if you want to design the L bracket, you should. Uh, we should have uh, sourced it from the original model, uh, not this one. I think we can still so uh, salvage it. Let's just do it. Okay. Shift D. And separate. Well, let's fix the okay. Uh, apply the mirror. Okay, the L bracket. Okay, but we need this to be at the same width as this. I'm in length, so uh, it's a way to do that. Uh, cursor selected, and then set the pivot po pivot point as the three cursor. Then selecting this topology here, Shift D, and then immediately go to press R, and then oh. Does it work like ah uh, because the this is not a square. Okay, let's try it again. Cursor selected shift D R. There we go. And we need this and then merge by distance. No. Uh, we're going to do this manually. This one, uh, this one to that one. So last, okay, this one to that one. And then using loop tools, flatten, flatten. Now we have an L to connect to the wall. Now we can just increase the subdivision. I'm going to save the, oops, here. Okay. I'm going to save the mesh data, save. And play along with the uh, randomized result. Might be a no. Ah, uh, this one. We there we go. Increase the subdivision. 
you split actually let's Wait, something like that. Let's play around with the seed value until you get what you like. Let's not use split, but turn off even offset. The only disadvantage of using even uh, turning off even offset is you have this kind of bulging effect. Split it is. It's just split. Yeah, I think that's good. So we have the uh, L structure. Oh, what the... There are the remnants of the symmetry. Okay. We can lock it to that. And we can just update this. Whoops. Major point to meet up on the L like that. Then we can array this like that. Okay. We have our actually, we can. Set this also. Uh, we need to set the origin point to the point of the object extras set origin. There we go. And so you can scale it down or up, and it will scale from the floor. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's make Let's make a final one. You can do more, of course. You can do like a water tank or something. This. Set the pretty cursor to this. And deselect anything. So without anything selected, the add intersect object. We'll add the object to the position of the 3D cursor. Now we can use the view and then just manually position this. Do it with you. Because the add intersects uh, object, the result will be a separate mesh. Okay, and then um, click on this object, draw faces. I'm going to press C on this surface here, and this will determine the distance that the draw object will be created to based on the view angle. So if I create like a uh, rectangle here, it will be created on that position based on our look angle. So we can set it here and create the foot of the. So you can press shift to snap it to 45 degree angles. And you can use alt to snap it to the, uh, to the first point, just to snap the last point to the first point. So combine those two, you can make the last point straight click and you have this. We can increase the control shift, control drag or control shift mouse drag to increase the thickness of the 
draw object. Then press space to complete the operation. Now, uh, the draw object inherits the origin point of the active object drawn. Uh, drawn and uh, drawn to. So you can see this is our uh, water tank object has that pivot point, and this also inherits that. So we can then symmetrize this, and it will symmetrize correctly with the active, uh, with the, uh, active object drawn from the last operation. Auto mirror, uh, no, no. Oh, yeah. Auto mirror, click on the axis. What you want mirror? X, Y. There we go. So, all is smooth. All is smooth. Also, this one, apply. Join everything. Going to delete this. Add some basic topology for the randomization to play with. Keep it simple. Okay, um, go to mirror this on the other side, X, Y. Okay, now let's try, uh, let's give some more subdivision here. Okay, let's try the randomization, see what we get. I'm going to exclude these faces from the rotation okay adjust these ones and uh, also create quad structure of this and leave this as an ingon okay uh, save the data so even if we mess this up we can uh, reuse the object again use doesn't match doesn't match any origin uh any geometry from the same mesh data but we can just let's see okay this is it <laughs> you just need to scale it scale it auto auto smooth it and then set the auto mirror back because the saved mesh data doesn't take into account the the mirror it doesn't save the uh, symmetry it gives you the real data the real mesh data like this if we turn off the mirror modifier so this is the real mesh data the applied mesh okay uh, let's use the randomization oops Um, merge this is it's probably because of the going to just use a level one subdivision even offset is off actually split no oh. Decrease the final size, increase the detail. Go. So don't mind the distortion too much because of the use case scenario. We're going to use it for, you're just going to use it for concept art. So we just need the, the shape. We just need to, uh, yeah, the hint of the shape. Actually, let's split this 
Petition shop. Battle battle, secret submission. There we go. Final size, increase. So if you have like some time in your hands, you can just open Blender and then create 3D assets. That's what I'm doing here. So anytime you wish to create a new scene, like a larger scene, you can just drag and drop the assets that you created using this method. this one and i'm going to use shift r just repeat the process just level one use level one on the cylindrical shapes Level one subdivision. Big shapes. There we go. And do we need to set the foot? Well, okay. I guess we can stop with this. Uh, control click on partition, which to join. Zero area fake, so many. And we have our objects. Now let's try and shade them. Shift Q, random vertex color. Uh, uh, let's uh, economize the, uh, apply the mesh first, apply the mirror. So in creative flow or in random flow, apply mesh. If you want to apply just the mirror, Control click on the operator. You can see in the description, control click to apply mirror modifier only. And there we go. Now I can use this. Let's just use cube projection. There's some, they're mostly angular and can fit. There's no add angles that stray from the squares uh, cube shape. So quick and dirty cube projection on angular objects. And then we're going to economize the Resolution using limited dissolve and just press Ctrl T to triangulate. Okay, now we're going to use uh, random vertex color one by one. It can work on multiple objects, but I'm going to use the sharp limit and this can slow down all. A lot of detail, so I'm going to use it on these objects individually and not at the same time. It doesn't crash. Shift R and Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, and Shift R. Okay, now we can. Um, Append the branch nodes. So for this, I'm just going to use the I'm selecting everything. 
use the RFlow, RFlow panel soft UV. This means that it is using the UV mapping, the object uh, suffix means that it's using the object mapping. So for this, we're going to use the RFlow panel soft UV. Okay, then swatch the texture. Okay, now we're going to modify the size of the texture or the, or the scale. But first, uh, delete this and replace it with the vertex color. Call it with the color M. So in order in order for the uh, for you to have this effect, for, uh, when I control click on this uh, node here, you can see it connect to the material output, which lets me preview the effect of these nodes, and then all the preceding nodes connected to it. And this is. The a feature of the node wrangler add-on. So you need to activate this. It comes bundled with Blender. It is a free add-on, bundled with Blender when you install it, but you need to activate it. So in the usual preferences in the add-ons, just search for it, just type uh, no uh, wrangler or node wrangler and it will show up, then activate it. Then you will have this option. So close shift and close shift here. Let's you preview the and like I said, like I said before, preview the node setup. And let you modify your shader much easier. Spread the lights, increase the emission strength. Okay, and then we're going to sort this out using the sort asset grid array, smallest, okay, wait a bit, smallest, but let's set this, this 
Let's set the start of the grid to the active object. Let's select this and then grid array smallest three. Okay. And then rename this. How do we how do we rename this? Uh, so name of the object. So um Mark as asset, use the same sorting method you used from the um, grid array operator. So that's smallest. And the name is, uh, I don't know, rand, rand buildings for random buildings. So description, random building asset. And then author is Linder Guppy. Or you tags separated by comma building um building what else will you call this buildings um walls building wall like that okay okay and then let's go to as browser Okay, and then you can search for the tag. You can search for the name or the tag. That's wall. Then shift Q browser to browser selected. Select or add, I mean add, not select, add a simple plane. We're going to test this out. And we can just drag this. Oh, uh, I forget to set. Yeah, I think I forgot to set the foot of the. I forgot to set the origin of the. Water. So it should scale as it should scale something like this from the floor. So I forgot to set it. I think we can wait. I think we can set this. Let's go back to let me show you. Let's go back to um outliner and to unset this as an asset control click so control click on the mark as asset control click on mark and then let us set the okay do we need john mark wait let's see extras set origin to the Z access like that. I think we don't need to unmark because this is the blend file that the asset browser is using. Let me see. Yes, we don't need to unmark because this is our asset. Okay, let's repeat that. There we go. So now it scales from the foot or from its foot.
Okay, let's try out the wall. Let's see if uh, let's do an array. We don't need to duplicate it. Let's just do an array. Add modify. I think the uh, if we add an array here, I think this will inherit also reflect on the okay let's add an array modifier like that now let's see if oops uh this one <laughs> yeah it also inherits the array modifier that's really cool Blender. cool now let's try the l structure and rotate it so we need to just really place it eyeball it because there's no docking mechanism so we just need to eyeball this and here as well okay let's eyeball it and also this Oops, eyeball. And increase this. I need to eyeball it back. Okay, and the L bracket. L bracket, oh my god. The L something. Uh, let's reduce this to three. So something like that. And yeah, we need some we need some more pieces for this. Okay, let me hide the, let me hide this. So once you, I uh, forgot to mention, once you, you mark the objects as asset, you can then save this blend file to the asset browser, asset browser folder that you can set in the user preferences because I can't show you the window, the, window, the user preference, preferences window because OBS Studio only records the main window. It's gonna uh, show you the auxiliary window. Okay, let's just hide this so we can focus on this scene. So for, uh, for example, this is our render view. Let's just control Alt zero to frame that into the render camera. Go into track lights and lock. Uh, okay, just zoom like that and lock the camera like that. Shift and field, I think. Uh, no. Set the dimension, render dimension to something like HDTV 1080p. Now all you need to do is add in some more, some extra stuff to make this more convincing. So yeah, I, I, 
I guess we can render at this distance, but when we decide this, we designed it to uh, to be in this render distance or farther. Yeah, it can also work at this distance. And it start to it starts to lose its credibility at slow at much closer. Actually it could still work. Um other lens. It just tests the uh, just testing how it looks like on different lighting conditions. Yes, so let's make room C. I think we can create another building here. So uh, we just created six. So if you if you have the time to create something like 20 and really plan out the objects that you're making. So just uh, keep the topology simple because from uh, you're making uh, buildings or assets that is going to be rendered at mid or far away render so avoid using too much detail just focus on the big shapes and yeah if you can make like something like uh, 20 objects you can then you can just drag and drop them like a lego pieces and then build stuff so build um, a design right from the asset browser Okay, so that is it for this video, and I hope you learned something new using random flow and the sort asset add-on, also created flow. And yeah, uh, if you have any questions, use the comment section below or the links in the description. Hit subscribe and notify. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.